Hallelujah. Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Welcome. We're so glad that you're with us this morning. Those of you here in the nave and those of you who are part of our online community, we're blessed that you've decided to join us this day. This is the seventh Sunday of Easter. That means the last Sunday of Easter. We are in an in-between moment in the church's life and story. On Thursday, we celebrated the Feast of the Ascension. When God receives Jesus into His glory. And we're waiting now for Pentecost. So Jesus in the story has ascended to heaven to be at the right hand of the Father. And the disciples are waiting for the sending of the Holy Spirit. Each of us at different times in our lives lives in an in-between moment. A moment between something that significant happened and waiting. And waiting. But our faith tells us that in our waiting, we are preparing ourselves for something even more glorious. On this last Sunday of Easter, let us think about our own ascending into heaven in our worship about ourselves being brought into the very presence of God in the throne of glory. And to end this welcome, I want to pray the prayer for the feast day of the Ascension. And by the way, not as a plug or advertisement, there is a blog on the website for me on the feast of the Ascension. And you might want to give it a little read short. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, whose blessed Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, ascended far above all heavens, that he might fill all things, mercifully give us faith to perceive that according to his promise, he abides with his church on earth, even to the end of the ages, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God in glory everlasting. Amen. Amen. Again, welcome. As we prepare for worship, please kneel for a moment of silence as you are able. Please stand.
Hallelujah. Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. you. Let us pray. O God, the King of glory, you have exalted your only Son, Jesus Christ, with great triumph to your kingdom in heaven. Do not leave us comfortless, but send us your Holy Spirit to strengthen us and exalt us to that place where our Savior Christ has gone before, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God in glory everlasting. Amen. Amen. We invite the children to come forward for the Children's Chapel procession. You may be seated. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. In those days, Peter stood up among the believers. Together, the crowd numbered about 120 persons and said, Friends, the scripture had to be fulfilled, which the Holy Spirit through David foretold concerning Judas, who became a guide for those who arrested Jesus. For he was numbered among us and was allotted his share in this ministry. So one of the men who have accompanied us during all the time that the Lord Jesus went in and out among us, beginning from the baptism of John until the day when he was taken up from us, one of these must become a witness with us to his resurrection. 
So they proposed two. Joseph called Barsabbas, who was also known as Justice, and Matthias. Then they prayed and said, Lord, you know everyone's heart. Show us which one of these two you have chosen to take the place in the ministry and apostleship from which Judas turned aside to go to his own place. And they cast lots for them, and the lot fell on Matthias, and he was added to the eleven apostles. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Today we will read Psalm 1, which is found in your bulletin. A reading from the first letter of John. If we receive human testimony, the testimony of God is greater. For this is a testimony of God that he has testified to his Son. Those who believe in the Son of God have a testimony in their hearts. Those who do not believe in God have made him a liar by not believing in the testimony that God has given concerning his Son. And this is a testimony. God gave us eternal life, and this life is, his son, is in his Son. Whoever has the Son has life. Whoever does not have the Son of God does not have life. I write these things to you who believe in the name of the Son of God, so that you may know that you have eternal life. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.
The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. Glory Glory to you, Lord Christ. Christ. Jesus prayed for his disciples, saying, I have made your name known to those whom you gave me from the world. They were yours, and you gave them to me, and they have kept your word. Now they know everything you have given me is from you. For the words that you gave to me, I have given to them, and they have received them, and know in truth that I came from you. And they have believed that you sent me. I am asking on their behalf. I'm not asking on behalf of the world, but on behalf of those whom you gave me, because they are yours. All mine are yours, and yours are mine, and I have been glorified in them. And now I am no longer in the world, but they are in the world, and I am coming to you. Holy Father, protect them in your name that you have given me, so that they may be one as we are one. While I was with them, I protected them in your name that you have given me. I guarded them, and not one of them was lost except the one destined to be lost, so that the scripture might be fulfilled. But now I am coming to you, and I speak these things in the world so that they may have my joy made complete in themselves. I have given them your word, and the world has hated them because they do not belong to the world, just as I do not belong to the world. I am not asking you to take them out of the world, but I ask you to protect them from the evil one. They do not belong to the world, just as I do not belong to the world. Sanctify them in the truth. Your word is truth. As you have sent me into the world, so I have sent them into the world. As for their sakes, I sanctify myself so that they also may be sanctified in the truth. The Gospel of the Lord. A few years ago, a close friend of our family died rather suddenly. Because her death took her so quickly, she didn't have much time to share with her family and friends her deepest hopes for them. In our Gospel reading, Jesus knows his time in the world is coming to an end. And he is able to share with his loved ones what he most wants them to know before he dies. We have been looking at these chapters in John for these past few weeks, where Jesus shares his heart for his disciples. And today's reading is a gift. It's an insight into the relationship Jesus has with the Father and with his followers. His deepest desire is that we would be one with one another in the same way that Jesus is one with the Father. This is what brings Jesus joy. Now at the time that our friend died, Louise and I had to return home 
but our children stayed back in Florida to be with the family. And we were concerned about them because our friend who died was like another mother to them and we knew they were hurting. But the next day they sent us a photo of the three of them together and our joy was complete because we knew they were sad and hurting but we also knew that they could lean on each other for comfort and strength. And as a parent, there is nothing that brings me more joy than when my children get along. I probably feel the same way, don't you? <laughs> uh, they are all so different, but love for each other unites them. And I imagine that God feels joy when his children get along. And I wonder if that is part of what Jesus is talking about when he says that they may be one as we are one, and that, may, that they may have my joy fulfilled in themselves. The joy that Jesus has in his love for the Father is what he wants for all of us to experience as we love one another. And Jesus models what that oneness looks like. But ironically, oneness with others can only be accomplished when we are completely clear about who we are in ourselves. And Jesus has that clarity. Jesus knows that he came from the Father. He knows he was sent to the world. He is clear that he has fulfilled his purpose for coming. And he knows where he's going, back to the Father. This clarity of purpose and identity frees Jesus up to experience complete unity with the Father. And look at how freely the giving and receiving between the Father and the Son continues. They were yours, you gave them to me. I have given them what you gave me. All mine is yours, and yours are mine. Jesus is clear that everything is a gift from the Father. And he could be sent into the trials of this world and keep that clarity of who he was in relation to the Father. And that's not easy. Jesus knows that firsthand. You see, the world wants to divide us and confuse us as to who we really are. The world also wants to separate us and isolate us. Jesus knows that, and so he prays against it. In this world, we can be so suspicious of each other, and the evil one is called the accuser of the brethren for a reason. He wants to divide us. Our world is perpetually divided. Often, we believe the lie that we don't belong to one another. We identify more with our politics or tribe than who we are in Christ as brothers and sisters. But in this beautiful prayer, where Jesus is praying for us, he makes it very clear who we are, where we come from, and what we are for. In the language of giving and receiving between Jesus and the Father, I hope you notice who that gift is that Jesus is talking about. It's you. Speaking to the Father, Jesus says, Yours they were, and you gave them to me. Yours they were. Take that in. Yours they were. Your origin is God. God is love, and you come from love. It is the truest story of who you are. And it gets even better. You are a gift of love that the Father gives the Son. And this truth sets us apart from the ways of the world. Knowing we come from love, are given as a gift of love for the purpose of love, sets us apart to live differently. Instead of looking out for ourselves, we can have the same self-giving love that is found in the relationship between Jesus and the Father. It's who we are. 
I think it is important that we remember that Jesus is praying to the Father to carry out his desires for us. He knows we cannot fulfill our purpose of love without power, the power of God. Jesus is leaving the world, but he is not leaving us alone. The Holy Spirit will come to enable us to bring to fruition who we are in God. And not only does Jesus reveal the truth about where we come from, who we are, and what our purpose is, but he is also continuing, even right now, to pray for us at the right hand of the Father. Take that in. Jesus is praying for you right now and sends us his spirit to give us everything we need to fulfill our calling to be one with one another. Jesus knew who he was and what he was called to be and do. This enabled him to be completely present to those he was with. And I like to imagine Jesus looking at me, at us, with his eyes that see into us and knows us and loves us. As we take in the truth that we come from God and we are given as a gift of love to the Son and that we are called to pass that love on to one another, we too will be able to be free to be present to one another with the same kind of love. We will no longer need to be better than anyone else. Because what could be better than being a gift of love from God to God? And my prayer is that you will know who you are in Christ, that you will experience the joy of Jesus by being one with one another. Amen. Let us now stand and confess our common faith by saying the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit he came incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. This morning we'll be using for the prayers of the people Form 6, which is found in your bulletin or on page 392 of your prayer book. In the Anglican cycle of prayer, we pray this day for the Anglican Church of Burundi. In the diocesan cycle of prayer, we pray for St. Luke's in the Meadow, Fort Worth, St. Luke's in Stephenville, and St. Martin in the Fields in Keller. In peace, we pray to you, Lord God. <coughs> 
for all people in their daily life and work, for our families, friends, and neighbors, and for those who are alone. For this community, the nation, and the world, for all who work for justice, freedom, freedom and peace, for the just and proper use of your creation, for the, for the victims of hunger, fear, and injustice, injustice and oppression, for all who are in danger, sorrow, or any kind of trouble, for those, for those who minister to the sick, the friendless, and the needy, for the peace and unity of the Church of God, for all who proclaim the gospel and all who seek the truth, for Archbishop Justin, for our presiding bishop, Michael, for our bishops, Andrew, Jeff, Kay, and Hector, and for all bishops, priests, and deacons, for all who serve God and his church. For the special needs and concerns of this congregation, praying together for those on our parish prayer list, Annie, Bob, Carol, Doreen, Donna, Joseph, Lindsay, Oliver, and Vern. We invite your individual intercessions and thanksgivings at this time, either silently or aloud. Okay. Um, for Jennifer and Javi. Pray for peace throughout the world, particularly in the Middle East and in Eastern Europe. Pray for those serving in the armed forces and their families. Pray for the victims of natural and man-made disasters, particularly victims of violence, for the flooding all over the Southeast this past week, and for our first responders. Pray for our parish and her faithfulness to the mission and ministries Christ has entrusted to us. <clears throat> Pray for the children of the world who suffer. And pray for those who are alone and have no one to pray for them. Hear us, Lord, for your mercy is great. We thank you, Lord, for all the blessings of this life, this parish, we will exalt you, O God, our King, and praise your name forever and ever. We pray for all who have died, that they may have a place in your eternal kingdom, <clears throat> Lord, let your loving kindness be upon them who put their trust in you. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I give to you, my own peace I leave with you. Regard not our sins, but the faith of your church and give to us the peace and unity of that heavenly city where with the Father and Holy Spirit you live and reign now and forever. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. 
we are, we are truly sorry, and we, and we humbly repent. For, for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have, have mercy on us and forgive us, that, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. Please stand. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Good morning. good morning. It's good to see you all this morning. Welcome those of you here who are uh, part of our NAVE community if, and those of you who are on our, in our online community. If you are a guest this morning, we welcome you and let you know that by your baptism, you're welcome to receive communion with us today. If you are uh, here, uh, there's a guest card in the pew pocket in front of you, if you please take that card, fill out as much as you want in terms of maybe the date, how many people are in your group, um, how often you have been visiting with us. If you're online, you can put into the comment section that you're new so that we can also welcome you into our community this morning. But know that by your baptism, you're welcome to receive communion with us. We uh, invite you to coffee after um, the service in Butler Hall. Be aware, in the storms that we had over the last two weeks before this weekend, a couple weeks more, we had lightning strike that damaged some pieces, and then we had water coming into Butler Hall and the library, and so you're going to find carpet pulled up and, and things like that. We're working with the insurance company, um, hoping they'll cover. Um, all of this will give you more information about all of this um, as we move forward and hear from the adjuster and the insurance company and the contractors and, and all of that. But know that we will be um, moving forward as all of those different parties um, do so. Uh, but there is coffee and snacks in there. And so... Please avail yourself to those things this morning, along with a little bit of fellowship and community. Next Sunday is Pentecost Sunday. Uh, Bishop Fisher will be here at the 10 o'clock service for baptisms and confirmations. We had the new members confirmation class uh, yesterday. The baptism class is going to be this, this Saturday coming up at 10 o'clock. And we, if you have signed the paperwork and all and registered for the class, wonderful, thank you. If you do have a baptism that you want us to celebrate, uh, but have not yet let us know, you need to do that so that we can uh, do the proper baptismal certificates and invite you to the baptismal class on the 18th. Uh, we have a lot of people who are willing to read Pentecost Sunday, the gospel, in, in a second language. Uh, we would love to have more at the 8 and the 5, and if you're willing to give one Sunday to the 8 or the 5, reading from a, a second language, that would be wonderful for those two congregations. Uh, but if you would like the 10 o'clock, and we haven't already filled somebody in for that particular language, let the office know, and I'm sure they'll be glad to have you come. Again, you won't be reading it solo. You'll all be reading it together. Um, as a reminder of what it sounded like on that original Pentecost Sunday in the upper room. Um, I know it's early, but the Episcopal Night at Minute Maid Park is Wednesday, July 31st. Uh, Houston Astros versus the Pirates. Um, there's a pre-party game at the Cathedral. Um, if you want to purchase tickets, there's a website 
uh, um, please go to purchase your tickets from trinity.trinitywillens.org. Click on the link. It will take you to buy your tickets. A portion of the proceeds will benefit the Episcopal Relief and Development Fund. And if we get enough people who want a bus, then we'll have a bus take you there uh, on that day. Or you can just meet us all there. Um, one last thing, if you are one of those who really read the bulletin or follow the bulletin closely, you'll know that I was supposed to preach today. Um, due to circumstances, um, I felt it better to ask Father Frank to do so, and it was really the right decision. Um, it was a, a marvelous message this morning, and I thank him for stepping in. Today we mark Mother's Day, and while Mother's Day is not a religious holiday, we do remember. But we also know that Mother's Day reflects something more deeper than just birth mothers, that many of us have adoptive mothers or foster mothers. All, we have grandmothers, and some of us have great-grandmothers. Some of us have mother figures in our lives that have moved and taught us how to live. On that day, uh, on this day, we remember all of those who in some way or another have brought us into some sort of life, uh, some sort of relationship with the world that is good and right. Um, so uh, what we do here as a part of the tradition is to remember all the women in this parish who are present, those of you who are online, to remind ourselves that through our baptismal vows, each of you are called to be spiritual mothers of this congregation. So with that in mind, thinking of all the different ways mothers come to us, and those of you present, if you'll please stand if you're a, a woman in the parish so that we can offer a blessing of spiritual mothers today. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Blessed are you, our God, who like a mother hen seeks to protect her brood. You have given us the gift of motherhood and graced us with your ch in your church with spiritual mothers. We thank you for the spiritual mothers of our past. Sarah, Deborah, Rebecca, Ruth, Elizabeth, Mary Magdalene, and the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of our Savior. We thank you for the spiritual mothers who seek to nurture this parish. May they continue to be a sign of your presence. May these women who bear the family name Christian do so with courage and joy. And may God's grace be upon you, our spiritual mothers, and the blessing of the Holy Trinity who creates, redeems, and sustains us all make you strong in faith and guide you into all peace and joy. Amen. Amen. God bless. Are there any birthdays or anniversaries this week for blessing? If you are, have a birthday or anniversary and you're part of our online community, we invite you to please put your birthday or anniversary in the comment section so that community can celebrate with you um, on that event. And if you stand as a symbol of receiving the blessing that I'm offering here, um, you're welcome to do so. Birthday? Today. Today. Happy birthday to you. Anniversary of the fifth wedding anniversary. Anniversary, which one? Fifth, fifth wedding anniversary. Happy anniversary. Do you have a birthday? Yeah. You do? How old? Three. Three. Wow. <laughs> you have a birthday? When? Last Tuesday? You have a birthday? When? How old? Nine. Almost there, aren't you? Let us pray. Oh God, our times are in your hands. Look with favor, we pray on your servants as they begin another year. Grant that they may grow in wisdom and grace and strengthen their trust in your goodness all the days of their lives. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Happy anniversary. Happy birthday to you. Yay!
Ascribe to the Lord the honor to His name. Bring offerings and come into His courts.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of heaven. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become for us the cup of salvation. Blessed be God forever. Receive, O Lord, these gifts presented by your people for the work of your church. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, through your dearly beloved Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. After his glorious resurrection, he openly appeared to his disciples and in their sight ascended into heaven to prepare a place for us that where he is, there we might also be and reign with him in glory. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever hear this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself, and when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit, 
to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in Him. Sanctify us also, that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by Him and with Him and in Him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia! Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore let us keep the feast. Alleluia. the gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on Him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
let us join together in the act of spiritual communion. Let us pray. Almighty God, in union with your faithful people at every altar of your church, where the Holy Eucharist is now being celebrated, we desire to offer to you praise and thanksgiving. As Jesus Christ has taught us, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory. Since we cannot receive the sacrament of Christ's body and blood, we beseech you, O God, to bind us together through your Spirit. Cleanse and strengthen us with your grace, that we may become one body and one spirit. May we live in you and you in us, in this life and in the life to come. Amen. In the name of this congregation, I send you forth bearing these holy gifts, that those to whom you go may share with us in the communion of Christ's body and blood. For we who are many are one body, because we all share one bread, one cup. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now to the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you now and forever. Amen. Amen.
Alleluia, alleluia, let us go forth into the world, rejoicing in the power of the Spirit. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Alleluia, alleluia. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.